I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. <laughs> Good morning from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, I'm not in Las Vegas proper. I'm not down on the strip right now. I'm actually out here at Red Rock Canyon, starting out a 350 mile ride out to Death Valley and back to Vegas this evening. Uh, it is currently February. <laughs> it's a little cold out. It is 45 degrees. Um, but I wanted to go out and see Death Valley because there's a natural phenomenon going on out there in Badwater Basin. It's pretty rare, um, but sometimes when the park gets flooding, a lake is created in Badwater Basin. Uh, it's temporary, and I just wanted to go ahead and check that out because I've also never been to Death Valley. So I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride and uh, see what else we get into. Now, I did grab breakfast before I hit the road this morning. I went to Hash House of Go-Go. It is very close to Red Rock Harley Davidson. It's actually in the same parking lot. I got a California scramble since we will be going into California today and that was super good. I'd highly recommend going there. Uh, the portions are massive, so just be aware of that. I won't be getting food again until after we go through Death Valley and we'll be stopping in Beatty for lunch slash dinner, depending on how long it takes to get there. But yeah, let's go ahead and get on the road. I was going to take y'all through Red Rock Canyon this morning. However, I did not get a permit. I completely forgot about that. So unfortunately, we are not going to be going through the little scenic drive today. However, there is a free road that you can basically take that'll give you pretty good views of the canyon if you don't want to pay for it or if you just forgot to get a permit like me. <laughs> so we'll be, uh, we'll be enjoying the Red Rocks from afar. Let's go ahead and get on the road, plug this heated gear in, and look at some cool rocks and other things. <laughs> Diamond is really, really close to the Red Rocks. You can actually see them right over here. There are so many motorcycles out. I think I've seen at least 50 bikes in the last hour. Even though it's 45 degrees out here in Vegas, everyone is out riding and it is so cool to see. So I think it's going to be a great day. The skies are just so blue. It's gorgeous out. I'm stoked to get up to Death Valley. <laughs> Over 100 miles away from the nearest park boundary, Las Vegas is the closest major city to Death Valley National Park. And a two-hour ride along some lonesome desert highways flanked by distant mountain ranges covered in snow isn't such a bad commute. All right, y'all, I have officially made it to Death Valley National Park. This is my first time here. I've never been here before, so I'm excited to take y'all along for the ride. Um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have time to see and do everything in this park. This place is massive. Also, there have been numerous flash floods in the last handful of years. And unless you're on an adventure bike, you can't even get to some of the best places in this park. And some of the best places are still closed from the floods. So even if you have an adventure bike, you can't get there anyway right now. <laughs> so this is definitely a park that I will be visiting again in the future, hopefully on an adventure bike when some of those roads open up. But for now, we are on a 2024 Road Glide. Um, by the way, we have not talked about my bike that I am on on this trip. So Harley Davidson flew me out here. They asked me like a month and a half ago if I wanted to come ride a new bike. They didn't tell me what it was until I landed in Las Vegas, got to the hotel to pick it up. Um, so that was pretty cool. <laughs> All I knew is that I'd be picking it up and I'd have five days to ride it. So this video is not a review of that bike. This is me simply putting some miles on it and checking it out. So far, I am really enjoying it. I've also ridden the new CVOs. Um, and if you like touring bikes and all the Grand American stuff that Harley comes out with, I think you will really like this new Rogue Glide. It rides like a dream. And I love that they put different handlebars on it for uh, the stock setup. But that'll be up for you to decide because you're probably not five foot four with T-Rex arms and a 30 inch inseam. So <laughs> if you're a six foot six guy, you're going to have a completely different opinion than me, of course. But anyway, 
enough rambling about the motorcycle. Let's go check out Dante's view and then head over to a couple other attractions in the park. Sitting along the ridge of the Black Mountains, Dante's view is considered one of the best scenic vistas in the park, providing a bird's eye view of Death Valley. The viewpoint is accessible via a 13 mile in and out road that climbs 5,500 feet above Badwater Basin, which sits directly below the viewpoint. Across the valley, you'll be able to see the highest point within the park, Telescope Peak, which towers over 11,000 feet in elevation above Badwater Basin. I almost skipped this viewpoint, but looking back on the day, I'm glad I didn't. It's so pretty out here. You are just surrounded by mountains. There's snow on the peaks. It's a little cold, but this is place is just like unworldly. <laughs> it's so pretty. So out here, I got my other camera in my hand. This is Badwater Basin. You can see Telescope Peak right over there. And normally this lake does not exist. So we're gonna go down there and check that out next. <laughs> That's actually the whole reason I came here is because I wanted to see Badwater Basin when it's not a dry lake bed. I just turned on the artist drive and this is one of the other things that I really wanted to do in the park and it's on the way to Batwater Basin. It's a nine mile one-way scenic drive and I told myself I was just gonna drive through it or ride through it and not stop but I feel like everyone else is hiking up this hill so I have to do it too. So let's go see what it looks like up here. Oh, I turned around as soon as I got like one minute into that hike. There's way too many people I don't think it would have been worth it. <laughs> so we're getting back on the bike and riding. Winding through hills carved by erosive power and water, the Artist Drive is one of the most popular scenic drives in Death Valley. At first, I didn't really get the hype as to why this detour was a must visit. But as the second half of the drive began to cross through deep roller coaster like washes and then turn tightly through the sand hills, it all made sense. already know what time it is. We're getting in a little bit of water here in Death Valley. <laughs> Heavy rain from Hurricane Hillary filled Badwater Basin with a vast, shallow, temporary lake known as Lake Manly in August of 2023. Due to the valley's extreme temperatures and dry climate, the lake is expected to disappear long before the summer of 2024 arrives. When it's dry, Badwater Basin contains nearly 200 square miles of iconic salt flats, some of the largest in the world. So about an hour ago, we were right up here. This is Dante's viewpoint. And now we are at the lowest place in North America, about to dip our feetsies <laughs> in this temporary lake bed. <laughs> so Badwater Basin is normally completely dry. It is 282 feet below sea level. But right now, due to recent rainfall in the area, it is uh, a lake, essentially. Um, and it doesn't pop up often. It's like every hundred years or something when there's a crazy flood, you know, a hundred year flood. Um, and it's only a couple of inches deep. We're just gonna send it. We're right here. Ooh. Oh God, it's cold. I didn't know what to expect, but it's cold. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. <laughs> I'm not too far into the water yet and it's starting to get really, muddy like my feet are starting to sink into the into the lake bed here oh god and i really don't want to get my jeans wet <laughs> so i don't know how far we're gonna make it <laughs> but check out this view it is absolutely gorgeous if you do hike out well past where most of the people walk on the salt flats the water will go from a muddy brown to a crystal clear however you do have to have time for that in addition to not being worried about being wet in cold temperatures 
it definitely hurts to walk <laughs> on this lake bed. It's like kind of crunchy. It's like when you go to the like a beach and there's shells and the shells are like hurting your feet as you're trying to like get out past the little shell sandbar, if you know what I'm talking about. That's what this feels like. And I feel like I have little shells stuck underneath my flip flops right now and it hurts. <laughs> So I'm not too far out as y'all can tell, but um, it's starting to get a little too squishy and I cannot get my jeans wet <laughs> because I still have to ride to Beatty for dinner so that I can show y'all a cool place to stop at there and then I still have to go all the way back to Las Vegas. So I do not want to be wet. It is going to be cold. And by the way, I didn't mention that yet. So Dante's viewpoint, which is what we were just at, is right up there. And it was 45 degrees or 46 degrees according to the bike when we were at the top. Now it's almost 70 degrees here at Badwater Basin. As y'all can tell, I shut all my riding gear layers. It was so warm <laughs> when I got off the bike. I was ready to shed the layers. Um, and it feels fantastic here. But it makes sense why they say Death Valley is the hottest place on earth and why they've recorded such warm temperatures here because yeah, it is much, much warmer right here at 282 feet below sea level than it was right up there. I'm going to enjoy my time here for a minute before I start heading back to the bike. Because um, I do not get to stay too long. We still got to get all the way to Beatty. So. I don't care how expensive this gas is, I'm just so glad I made it. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of the elevation here or what, but my gas mileage dwindled. There's nothing like almost running out of gas in the middle of nowhere on a bagger. <laughs> God, that would have sucked. But um, I made it, so I'm gonna get gas and then we're off to baby. Just as fast as the temperatures went from the mid 40s to mid 60s as I headed into Death Valley, they quickly dropped back to the mid 40s as I headed up an elevation towards Beatty via Daylight Pass. Within 20 miles, the temperature dropped more than 20 degrees. Luckily, it's only a 50 mile ride from Furnace Creek to Beatty. Death Valley was so beautiful. Definitely learned a handful of things. Um, one, I would not want to ride through there at night because basically everything is wash. <laughs> I actually went through one area that was flooded and I had to like pick the area of the road that only had like an inch of water on it. So that's something to know. Uh, if it's been raining in Death Valley, definitely consider like flooded areas. Uh, number two, leaving Death Valley and heading to Beatty, which is where I'm at now. I'm at Smoke and Jay's, which is where we're gonna be having dinner. Um, there's wild burrows everywhere. <laughs> I saw over a dozen of them, it was so cool but I wouldn't want to hit one on my bike and you just never know what they're going to do. So definitely things to keep in mind, but the park is absolutely beautiful. I can't wait to go back. I wish I would have had more time to see everything I wanted to see in Death Valley on this trip. Um, I wanted to stop at the Rye Lake Ghost Town, which is right here outside of Beatty, but I didn't have time. So we are going to have to come back, but for now it is definitely food time. So let's go inside and eat. <laughs> I've heard a lot of good things about this place. So I'm at Smoke and Jay's and Beatty and I got a little bit of everything. Y'all know I love Texas style barbecue. I don't think this is exactly Texas style barbecue, but I've heard a lot of really good things about it. So I wanted to stop here. I got one of their jalapeno cheddar sausage links. I also got some brisket and I asked for moist and they accommodated, so that's cool. Also got some of their banana pudding, their jalapeno uh, mac and cheese, which came highly recommended. And y'all know I love sides and then it came with pickles. Y'all know I love pickles and I don't typically get barbecue sauce, but I figured why not try it. So we're going to dig in. Mm -hmm. That was good. This was a solid, solid recommendation. Uh, Josh from Two Lane Life the other day was actually telling me about this place and he told me I had to go and he told me I had to get this mac and cheese. 
This jalapeno mac and cheese actually has like corn in it, but it's super creamy. And I've actually been adding my brisket to it and making like a brisket jalapeno cheddar corn mac. It's really good. Wanna dig into this cheddar sausage link. It's got like big old chunks of jalapeno in it. Here's a piece for y'all to see. It's like the perfect amount of spice, at least for me. Might be too spicy for some people, but for me, this is really good. Save the best for last, banana pudding. I think they use real bananas in this too, like just looking at the texture of it. It's really good. This, this is gonna be a clean plate. <laughs> it is going to be a brutal 120 miles back to Las Vegas from here in the dark, completely stuffed to the rafters because I've eaten everything on this plate <laughs> other than the bread. I never eat the bread, but this was solid. Now I wish I could stay in Beatty tonight. That was actually my original plan. And then I was going to go out to the Rhyolite ghost town in the morning. Um, unfortunately, it is going to be raining, if not snowing here tomorrow. So I am headed back down to Las Vegas and tomorrow I'm going to be getting up and heading out for breakfast with the girls and then heading out to Phoenix to see a friend and try and just avoid some of this cold, icky rain -y weather, the Pineapple Express. So I will see y'all tomorrow and we will grab breakfast at a pretty cool little dollar bill bar cafe kind of spot um, and then head out to Phoenix. So. I'll see you all tomorrow. In case anyone was curious, the new headlights on the new road glides are bad ass at night. That was a very easy 120 miles in the middle of nowhere with no freeway lights or nothing. That was awesome. One other thing, just for my own personal memories, so it was pretty crazy. I went to put my gloves back on when I was in Beatty, my gauntlets, and I was adding my heated glove liners to them. And my hands had been sweaty inside the gloves and it was so dry in Death Valley that they ended up shrinking because I didn't have them on when I first left. So they had time to dry up and shrink. That is how dry it is out there. That is crazy. It, when, I, when I was trying to put the heated glove liners on in Beatty, I mean, it was like, I was forcing my hand into the leather glove. It was wild. <laughs> but anyway, that's the end of this video. <laughs> Later, y'all.